There's never been a better time to grow your business. A lot of small business owners have felt the impacts of COVID-19 hard, but isn't being adaptable and solving problems really what entrepreneurship is all about? The world might not look quite the same as it did before COVID and your business and client needs might have changed too, but with a good plan, you can prepare for the best, plan for the worst and find new opportunities not only to survive, but thrive in business. Hi, I'm Natasha Mitchell, owner of Inspire and Drive and creator of The Simple Business Method. And today I'm sharing my top tips for surviving in these uncertain times. Changing business conditions and fluctuations in the economy are not limited to a pandemic. As business owners, we're constantly facing challenges and changes. And it can be really easy to get caught up in all of the fear mongering and fixating on worst case scenarios. But today I'm sharing five strategies that will help you make better decisions and feel more calm and in control of what happens in your business, no matter what's going on around you. Tip number one is fact versus fear. When you make decisions based on facts, you'll always get better results. Spending your time worrying about things that may never happen, just deplete your energy and take focus away from problem solving and finding new opportunities. When you're operating from a place of fear, it's easy just to react and make mistakes and that can waste precious time, energy and money. And that's the last thing you wanna do when you're in uncertain times. So to avoid being constantly in reactionary mode, you can take your planning one step further. Start by writing down all the worst case scenarios that you can think of when you're feeling calm and then rate them on how likely it is you think they will happen. For anything you rate as highly like to happen, spend some extra time thinking about how you can avoid those situations or minimize the impact. For everything else, it's out of your head now and it's not taking up space. And you can revisit this list from time to time to see if, if anything has come true or needs to be taken off or added to the list. And by doing this, you don't have to spend all your time rehashing and worrying about things that might never happen and instead focus on what is working and where you can get the biggest impact. So think about that for a moment. What's one thing you fear in your business right now and how likely is that to happen? And this leads us on to step number two, which is contingency plan. And a contingency plan is simply a plan of alternative scenarios. I feel that this part is one of the most overlooked parts of the annual planning process. You already know how to set goals and targets, but when we do that, it's usually based on a set of expected conditions. Imagine if you're a restaurant owner or in the events industry and your plans for the year relied on being able to provide in-person events. What do you think happened to those plans when lockdowns or government restrictions suddenly limited event sizes or in-person dining? Well, I think we all know what happened. Nobody wants these things to happen, but whether it's COVID or any time in history, we're always faced with unexpected things happening. It could be financial, a health situation, the regulatory environment, or a staff issue. And all of these things can have an impact on our business. So just like the fact versus fear tip, when you make a contingency plan, when you're feeling calm, you'll know exactly what to do if something unexpected occurs. To start your plan, think about your fear and what different types of situations could occur, both positive and negative. A common example that many retail and hospitality businesses have had to face is, I'm going to have to lay off staff. So define some trigger points or conditions that have to be in place for that to actually happen. So for example, before you lay off staff, you might have to experience a 50% drop in revenue for more than three months and have exhausted all the government support programs and any other sources of funding. That may be one trigger point before you lay off your staff. It also might give you an opportunity to think about what other creative options you might put in place so that you can keep all of your staff. For example, you might have shorter opening times or rotating shifts. You might eliminate bonuses or offer some new services like takeout or delivery, or you could even re redeploy staff to some different jobs. I encourage you in this process to get creative and if you're doing this in, in advance you can certainly involve your team in the solutions and you might really be surprised with what you come up with. 
So once you have your plan and the trigger points, you won't be jumping from one thing to the next or making rash decisions before you need to. And if the worst case scenario does happen, you can confidently make those hard decisions know you've done, knowing you've done everything to avoid it happening and minimizing risk. So do you have a contingency plan? What's one worst case scenario that you can plan for right now? Tip number three is to pivot in your lane. With a contingency plan at the ready, you can start to explore different options or pivots that you may be able to take in your business. I can't tell you how many clients over the last year have come to me with these extreme pivot ideas. They're way outside of their current offering, way outside of their skill set, and they're not even targeted to their current client base. In uncertain times like this, the last thing you want to be doing is starting from zero with a completely new business idea. Instead, I encourage you to take a step back and think about just some small changes you could make to your existing offer. For example, if you're a coach who normally provides in-person services, you now might offer those same services online. Um, if you're in the event industry, some of my clients pivoted to smaller, more boutique weddings, and they included online streaming services. Others use their creative skills to create online gift stores or teach people something creative. In all of these, they were able to target their existing client base who were simply looking for new ways to entertain themselves or even shop during the pandemic. For cafe and restaurant owners, you might have noticed how some of them added more takeout or even started offering things like grocery options or cooking classes. So these are just a few examples how by looking at the changing needs of their clients and the changing conditions, they were able to find opportunities to leverage their existing resources and skills and solve a problem. So think about that in your business. What's one thing you could tweak or expand on that would use your existing skills and resources and would solve an immediate problem for your existing client base? I hope you're enjoying these tips so far. Do you see how facing your fears and planning early can really make a big difference? And if you want to get your hands on all of these tips, you can grab my free How to Survive in Business in COVID guide and the link's in the description below. So pause the video right now and grab it. Tip number four is diversify. And you've probably heard this before. Any good investment strategies involves having different streams of revenue. And these could come from both within or outside of your business. If money is a bit tight, investing in real estate or a big financial investment might not be an option for you right now, but you can still make money in a lot of different ways. So here are a few ideas that you might not have considered. Number one is you could become an affiliate for a product or tool. It might be something that you're already using in your business. As an example, as more people started going online with their business, one of the affiliate products I offered was a tool called GrooveFunnels, which is an email and funnel generating tool. And if you want to check that out, you can get access to a free version of this software and you can use my affiliate link and that's in the description below. What's great about this tool is my customers were having a problem. I was able to provide them a solution and add value and I was able to generate revenue at the same time. Another example might be collaborate with someone who has a similar audience to you. It could be simply saving money by trading your services or again, creating some kind of collaboration or affiliate option where you offer your services or promote for them in exchange for a fee. Just as an example, if you're in the event industry, maybe you could help a coach design an amazing online event. Or if you have a physical product, you could get use that as a giveaway or a fun gift. A third example is this might be the perfect time to learn a new skill. Anything with social media or technology is really hot right now, as is anything in the health and wellness sector. You might not use all of these skills right away, but they might be something that you could use to enhance your offer in the future. And of course, if your business is doing well right now because you're delivering exactly what the world needs, remember to put a little bit away for a rainy day and think about some of those bigger investments that can generate passive income. But as always, make sure you seek help from professionals to guide you on these strategies. So ask yourself what's one additional stream of revenue you could tap into right now in your business. 
And the last tip is tip number five, keep things simple. And I'm all about that. Complexity kills in business, no matter whether you're in good times or in bad times. Overly complex structures and processes make it hard to be flexible and nimble. And in uncertain times, it's even more important to be able to move quickly to take advantage of new opportunities or the changing conditions around you. It could be as simple as an automation um, to streamline a process or delegating a simple task that will free up your time and allow you to reach a new audience. As a leader of your business, you need to be at your most energetic and creative when times are tough. So think about it. What is one thing you could simplify in your business today? So I hope these tips have been helpful for you. Remember, all is not lost. You might be down, but you're not out. You're an entrepreneur and you can do this. And if you like this video, then check out my interview with Dr. Kathy Groover on how to shift your focus in challenging times. I'm Natasha Mitchell. Thanks for joining me. Now let's go break some rules and stay inspired.